Hydroxylamine is the simplest compound that contains a covalent single bond between nitrogen and oxygen. It's a reducing agent and was historically a very useful tool for purifying aldehydes and ketones as it reacts with those compounds to form oxymes, which are highly insoluble crystalline materials. It's surprisingly hard to find for amateur chemists, but easy to homebrew, and this video shows one way you can homebrew it. Even more surprisingly, I've yet to find any other videos demonstrating its preparation, but this may well be because my search engine kung fu game is weak. The procedure I've used is adapted from Georg Brauer's Handbook of Preparative Inorganic Chemistry, published in West Germany in 1960 and translated to English in 1963. From a modern perspective, it's a truly extraordinary book that describes how to make every type of inorganic compound from the mundane to the terrifyingly dangerous, and does so in very plain and simple language, all the while citing the relevant references. This procedure is the Rashig process, which involves reacting a nitrite salt with a bisulfite salt at 0 degrees C to form a hydroxylamine disulfonate salt, then hydrolyzing that salt to hydroxylamine bisulfate by refluxing it in water. The Rashig process is also notable for being one of the few reactions where nitrate acts as an oxidizer rather than as a reducing agent. In this video I'll be preparing it on a half a mole scale, which is relatively large, for reasons you'll find out in due course. The reagents used were deionized water, sodium nitrite, sodium metabisulfite, sodium chloride, industrial methylated spirit, acetone, 15% sulfuric acid, and a lot of ice. The first step was to prepare suitably cold solutions of sodium metabisulfite, which was 95 grams, in what started out as 300 ml of water and ended up close to 500 due to it precipitating when cold, and sodium chloride, which was 87 grams in 260 ml of water. Once everything was dissolved in both solutions, I left them in the fridge overnight. I then dissolved sodium nitrite, 35 grams of that, in 100 grams of ice, in a container big enough to hold the entire reaction mixture, which took a lot of shaking and patience. Sharp-eyed viewers will notice said container is a 2 litre mixing bowl of the kind normally found in kitchens. I've got no beakers that are big enough, and even if I did, they'd be too tall to fit in the fridge. Once most of the nitrite had dissolved, I put a stir bar in the bowl and added the metabisulfite solution to it in small portions, slowly and carefully. The reaction between nitrite and metabisulfite is very exothermic, and if you add it too quickly, you can actually feel the mixture getting warm through the base of the bowl. After that, I added the sodium chloride solution and industrial methylated spirit. That's 250ml of that. You can add both of these in one go, since they just precipitate out the product and no actual chemical reaction takes place. I then put the glorious looking and slightly acrid smelling golden mixture in the fridge for two days. Having done this before, I find the product precipitates easily at low temperatures, but it takes a while for the full yield to be obtained. After two days, I've got a mass of fine transparent crystals that was not so much a crystal garden as a crystal black forest. I decanted about half the supernatant fluid into a jug, filtered the rest of it under vacuum into my biggest round bottom flask, and left the pump running for another half hour to get the last of the water out. The spoils were 57.6 grams of sodium hydroxylamine bisulfonate, which is 49% with respect to sodium nitrite. Brower cites the expected yield as 50%. The next step was to reflux this rather heat unstable salt in water for two hours to hydrolyze it to sodium sulfate and hydroxylamine bisulfate. Brower gives the reaction time as several hours without quantifying them, and I did this using 125 ml of water. For the reflux, I used a long lean condenser for extra efficiency, so you don't have to top the water up with ice too often, and also because it looks cool. Once refluxing was complete, the solution was boiled down over about an hour and a half. Being far less soluble than hydroxylamine bisulfate, sodium sulfate precipitated out first. The mixture was cooled to fridge temperature, and the precipitate was collected on the pump. In its hydrated form, sodium sulfate is a real red-headed stepchild of chemistry in that it's one of the most common unwanted byproducts of a reaction. Its anhydrous form is much more useful as it can be used as a drying agent. Because the product is very hydroscopic and decomposes over about 120 degrees, the filtrate was dehydrated by vacuum distillation in an apparatus that incorporated my recently acquired and even cooler looking Dimrot condenser. When drying a hydroscopic compound like this, the concentrated mixture will bump quite violently and the product will get coated all over the inside of the flask, so it's best to use a big flask. 
When I couldn't get any more of the water out by distillation, acetone was added to draw out the remaining water. The product's nearly insoluble in acetone, and because some of the product was still dissolved in the tiny amount of water, forming a highly concentrated solution, the supernatant fluid separated into two phases. Around 12 ml of 15% sulfuric acid was added, the mixture was heated to 50 degrees, and as much of the product was dissolved as possible. This mixture was cooled overnight in the fridge to precipitate anything remaining dissolved in the water in a crude kind of recrystallisation. The product formed large colourless prisms which were collected on the pump, giving a final yield of 19.3 grams, which is 60% with respect to sodium hydroxylamine bisulfonate and 29% with respect to sodium nitrite. Which is not great, but nor is it entirely a slap in the face with a wet fish. Since the amount of sodium sulphate obtained was also about 60% of what was expected, I suspect the sodium hydroxylamine disulfonate was not entirely dry and it contained water of crystallisation. As some sulphur dioxide could be smelt on the initial addition of sulphuric acid, I also suspect some of the product was lost that way. Overall, in its current form, this process is practical if not efficient. It's a lot of reagents for not much material. The end result, hydroxylamine bisulfate, is not widely available from suppliers generally. The more widely available and less soluble sulfate can be obtained by adjusting the pH to alkaline in the first step after bisulfite is added to nitrite. Since I'm using it for a reaction that requires the water content to be kept to the absolute minimum, I prepare the bisulfate. Once I get the wrinkles ironed out, that reaction will probably appear in a future video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.